you know, how blessed could one be to be in a position and doing something that they love to do, but doing it with an open, you know, an open palette and an open opportunity to, uh, to write your own story, you know, to go out there and ride things that hadn't been ridden before and ride them in a manner in which they hadn't been done before. Noah Selaznik was pretty much pioneering the this, this sport back in the day, bringing 110% skate into snow. You know, I hope people don't forget about it because it was a huge part of what, what we're all doing. Watching Noah Selaznik um, and Chris Roach, those guys were killing it. They were skateboarding on the snow. He's influenced pretty much every generation up until now, even though a lot of the kids in, in modern snowboarding have really no idea who Chris Roach is. So yeah, the first movies we got hold of was the uh, Hard Hunger of the Homeless back in the day, so we watched that like five million times. And uh, Roman Rogers was just next level. I just remember it was, we were blown away. So yeah, seeing Rowan do a cab seven, um, when we're all kind of basically doing 360s and back on 80s and, and stoked to get a cab and just to see him cab seven pretty much changed everything. Dave and Todd's shots in Up in the Ante were, to me, they were, the, they were some of the coolest shots because suddenly it was like mind-blowing big. Probably a day of shaping and just cutting away and uh, then the session was on. Uh, it was the first time that we, we felt we could go bigger and, and land. I keep on bring, coming back to Jamie Lynn just because I think he progressed style. And he also progressed spins, and his method was unstoppable. Another one would probably be Ingmar's huge 22 foot method. That thing was just so crazy back then. Like, it was just, people couldn't even like understand it. I remember when I first saw it, I was just like, just tripping out on it so hard. Yeah, Danny or Frank was pretty sick back in the days. Uh, and what I really remember was, was those front corks and all that stuff, and it was that was pretty next level at the time. I think uh, Peter Lyon, all the stuff, all the tricks he started doing, really changed a lot of stuff. He just came on the scene and started doing all kinds of switch stuff and just blowing people's minds. And, just coming up with his own tricks and people didn't even know what he was doing half the time. Uh, one of the best things I'd ever seen was um, when JP threw down that double court. In three tries, he made one of the most groundbreaking tricks in snowboarding come to life. That stepped on Lucas front side 720. That was definitely one thing that I saw change. A little bit of the size of the tricks and pushing tricks in the backcountry. When Andreas Wig did that backside rodeo seven off that huge cliff up in, um, I think it was up in Mammoth, that was obviously next level. Yeah, man, when Arrow did that double flip, that was unlike anything I'd seen before. When he busted that one out, I was like, <laughs> totally amazed. I never saw anybody do two flips and spins like that. <laughs> never, I didn't even want to hit that jump, and he was like, into some new shit. Hey, Bethna, what are you doing with the torte
¿Qué pasa la Cooper? Ok, drop in. What was that, dude? Did he really just do that? <laughs> yeah, Arrow. Where are we? Somewhere in some fjord in Norway. Audi. Mordor, you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> Wet green grass, I've got a chainsaw 
at Jeremy, he comes to the spot beforehand and matches his outfit to the rail he's gonna hit. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy, dude? <laughs> Church and you flecting on bar stools. We're praying that the taps will 
keep the holy water flowing Key kicks of communion and a long night of confessions Coming home after noon seems to raise a lot of questions When in Minnesota and you've got a drinking quota I watched a lot of movies back in the day and when I was growing up and I think like my favorite movies were the Mac Dog movies. It was always like about skate style and lots of tricks and it was so much better than the just like big mountain carving, I thought. Jibbing has always been a part of snowboarding. In the early films the jibs were small and experimental, but they were paving the way for things to come. Kind of the early jib stuff that a lot of guys were doing, like uh, Nate Cole and Dale Raymer, Ron Rogers, like just the fact that those guys weren't riding on snow and they were riding on everything else they could find that wasn't snow was just so crazy to me. An obsession like all the stuff that was left in front of this area, all the benches and handrails and anything that was left out. You know, we're definitely skate influenced, so we started seeing handrails around ski resorts and stuff. And, you know, we just post up and you know, try to and just have sessions on. You know, we didn't we really didn't know what was possible and just kind of went for it. And it was a real simple kind of start lifestyle. This shot of Roan in Team France, when I saw him attempt to do that a couple times, it was pretty much, in my mind, what pushed the entire envelope of you know, handrail riding today for sure.
After these early sessions, jibbing pretty much died off for several years. Then JP brought the whole rail thing back to like a, like JP and Jeremy brought it back to like a whole new different level from where it started out as. So I think it's just kind of like, you take something from the old and make it new, but better and bigger.
one of the last days of the season. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, seriously, it could not work. It could work. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. Lights taking you nowhere. Angel, look at that sky. Life's begun. Nights are warm and the days are young. There's my favorite lost but so. Opening doors and pulling some strings Angel Then walk luck and you looked in time Never looked back, walk tall, act fine
jump with enough G on it. I just pointed it from the top. I just pointed it from the top and it went over the fucking knuckle and it almost went into a fucking triple backflip. Look at this guy. I'd rather just go off of it. Really? That's so gnarly trying to turn it sideways right there. Might not work. That's we'll see. If you feel every level.
hello I wish I was a little bit taller I wish I was a baller I wish I had a girl who looked good I would call her Wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six form part I wish I was like six foot nine so I could get with Leo She cause she don't know me but yo she's really fine You know I see her all the time everywhere I go And even in my dreams I can scheme a way to make her mine Cause I know she's living fat Her boyfriend's tall and he plays ball So how am I gonna compete with that? Cause when it comes to playing basketball I'm always last to be picked and in some cases never picked at all So I just lean up on the wall Or sit up in the bleachers with the rest of the girls who came to watch they man ball Dad y'all I never understood black Where the jocks get the fly girls and me I get the hood rats I tell them scat, skittles, kebab, got hit with a body, but sit in a hospital for dark and that mess. I confess it's a shame when you're living in a city that's the size of a box and nobody knows your name. I'm glad I came to my senses, like quick, quick, got sick, sick to my stomach, overcome it by thoughts of me and her together, right? So when I asked her out, she said I wasn't a type. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her. I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six four baller. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl, I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six one bar. I wish I had a brand new car, so far I got this hatchback, and everywhere I go yo I get laughed at. And when I'm in my car I'm laid back, I got an A-track and a spare tire in the back seat, but that's flat. And you wanna know what's really whack? See I can't even get a date, so what you think of that? I heard that prom night is a bomb night with a hood ratchet and old type of really though. When in my car I can't even get a hello Well, so many people want a cruise cringe on Sunday One day I'ma have to get in my car and go You know I take the 110 into the 105 Get off on cringe on, tell my homies look alive Cause it's hard to survive when you're living in the concrete jungles And these girls keep passing me by She looks fly, she looks fly Make me say my, my, my I wish I was a little bit taller I wish I was a baller I wish I had a girl with a good I would call her I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat we were hitting this flat over here. We got kicked out right away. Lovely day, waking up in the bed, room with the shower, microwave, coffee shop, fresh muffin. It's gonna be a good day. Gavin looks pretty, um, pretty rough. <laughs> Piece of wood spilling everywhere. <laughs> but that's our house we're supposed to live for the next two weeks. You want me to look at you or the camera? Whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Okay. You see where we at? We in Valdez. Ah, <laughs> got a sick is run. Really? I think I think I'm staying. Are you out? I would have left an hour ago. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Grumpy old man, huh? seem to find and how they're in a hurry to complicate their minds by chasing after money and dreams that can't come true i'm glad that we are different we've better things to do may others plan their future i'm busy loving you I'm with you, we'll take it nice and easy and use my simple plan. You'll be my loving woman, I'll be your loving man. We'll take the most from living, have pleasure while we can.
From the table, turn around, said, read the booty label, what unstable is thinning, cable scooping, I'm like a label, told no fables, saying, able to do the press, cradle, love's fatal, sitting in a mercury stable, asking me the trailer back to a stable, she came to by beta woman, like a 808, oh, the sound it makes, and she had a video for me to take, okay, L-M-N-O, be careful when take it slow, the moves are corrigible, I'm looking so adorable, fantasies affordable, bring in my mind, sand, sun, Okay, hold on, hold on. Do one more. Yeah. But this time, go back, go back. Okay, ready? That, that was go. This morning, okay. This was really good this morning. It's their beans. It was psycho. I could. It got me so okay. Tired. Okay. I, no. I think one more time. No, just, this time you got, don't do this this time. <laughs> this time I just want you to be like, because that looks like you're almost faking it. So this time, just kind of wipe your face off and look all bummed. Okay. Oh crap, dude! I forgot to turn the camera on. Oh, freezing. Sorry, sorry. This is it. I swear. Okay, go. Okay, wait, wait. I got one more idea, then we're done. This time, I just want you to do the same thing, and they go. Like one more, one more. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> I should have gotten it. <laughs> well, people turn off your television. People turn off the television. People gotta stop. 
start making decisions. People gotta start making decisions. People put down your magazine. People put down your magazine. People been living your life too clean. People been living your life too clean. From around, from around. I watched on videos for all the years. My idols was, was like getting to jam with Ozzy Osbourne and Randy Rhodes and your favorite rock star. Um, it's just weird to go heliboarding with Matt Goodwill and hit kickers with Selaznik and ride the park with Jamie Lynn. Um, and I think at those times is when I rode the hardest because like I'm sitting next to these guys, I, I, I gotta impress them, you know? I'm not just gonna be that dork kid. But it's funny now, it's like, I'm the old guy, and there's these young kids who are like riding all hard next to me. I'm like, God, I wish this little kid wouldn't be riding so hard. <laughs> Best jumper, Jamie Lynn. Best all-time jumper? Hmm, I'm trying to think. That probably, I'd have to say, uh, probably Peter. Devin is... One of the sickest jumpers, style-wise. I really like his style. Best jumper, Andre Slee. I would say best jumper, DCP, UC. I'd say UC, actually. Sorry, DCP. <laughs> I think uh, as far as best style, best jumper of all time, Devin Walsh will probably get the award for that. Best jumper? Man, I'm going to have to just go with UC on that one, I think. Uh, well, I, I just, I guess I have to say Peter Line because he just looked at the mountain differently than everybody else did. Peter Line. Best jumper, uh, Pete Line, for sure. Peter Line, best jumper, Peter Line. Best jumper, Peter Line. Best jumper of all time would be, shoot, there's a few of them out there. I'm just gonna have to say Peter Line. Best jumper, Peter Line.
Best jibber, hands down, Roan Rogers. Best jibber of all time. Uh, that's, I'd have to give that one to Jake Blattner. Best jibber, Jeremy Jones. Best jibber? Jeremy, dude. He's solid and he's got the stats to prove it. Just load up a part and check it out. JP Walker for sure is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna have to say Jeremy Walker and JP Jones. Best jibber is JP Walker. JP Walker. JP. JP Walker. JP Walker. Best jibber, JP. Don't even need to go into it. Best half pipe guy, Terry. I have to give Sean the credit. I mean, he's the best, yeah. yeah. Best pipe, Sean Wynn. The best pipe rider, I would have to say, is Terry J. It's just all the stuff he, all the tricks he had in his arsenal, and just being able to throw down, no warm up style, and just, he was insane. He just took it to a whole nother level. Best pipe rider, uh, Danny Cass. Terrier, for sure. You know, in all the years that I've watched Pipe and just kind of seen what happens in there, and I'm gonna say the one that had the most potential that kind of stepped away from it was DCP. In the Pipe, my favorite one to watch is still Terrier. Terrier Hawkinson, hands down. Terrier's just speed and height in the Pipe just really pushed everybody at the time. Uh, best Pipe, Terrier. Best pipe rider, Terry Hawkinson. He not only won a bunch of contests, but he created tri tricks in the pipe and created more amplitude. He was the first one to do it all in the pipe. Best MDP film for me is obviously New Kids in the Twalk. It was um, literally what inspired me to, to go snowboard and, and do this stuff. And everything in it from the music to the riders is just so on point with where snowboarding was at that time. And it was so progressive. And that's just hands down the best movie. I guess the best for me would be Stomping Grounds was a great film. The best MDP film is Hard the Hungry and the Homeless to me. Best Mac Dog film, um, Pocahontas. <laughs> Best MDP film, I would say for me it would be Meltdown Project. It was just the right time, the right mountains, it was a good snow year, and we had way too much fun. I think my favorite MDP film was either Jog Smack or uh, Follow Me Around. Because of, not only because I was part of the crew and I've, I've witnessed a lot of the action and got to work closely with a lot of the people in there, but I don't know the feel of it and maybe the, the whole new eras of filming, filmmaking, and, and everything. Everything kind of blend good. It was more of my favorite. Meltdown project. Hard Hunger at the Homeless, because that, that was a time when we growing up and watching that like a million times a day. And, you know, that was just, you know, our time and, and inspired my career. And then later on, I would have to say Decade. That was just next level snowboarding. 
Best MDP film. Decade. Decade was amazing. My favorite MDP film was uh, Hard Hungry and the Homeless, for sure. Upping the Annie, because that was the first one I was in. So for me, like my favorite movie has to be True Life. Um, just the fact that it was a team video, and I've always thought, you know, back then there wasn't any team videos, and so this one was, you know, form for one thing. It was, you know, the top, you know, best writers all writing for form. They all, you know, the way they edited the movie, the way they, you know, um, the way they kind of brought out their personality, their intros. Um, it was, it was all put together really well. I thought and. That was definitely um, groundbreaking for, uh, for that movie. Yeah. Heart the Hungry and the Homeless. That was the movie that that was the movie that I wore out for sure. And upping the Annie actually was in there. You know, it, it got shuffled in, but some for some reason Heart the Hungry and the Homeless was I think it was the soundtrack. I mean I just re I recorded it used a tape recorder and just recorded that soundtrack off of the TV. Like with all the talking and everything and that, that's what I played in my car forever. There's so many good ones. It would be really hard to narrow it down to just one. I think the whole collection should be owned by everybody. Go out and buy your copy today. I don't know. <laughs> Who's this guy, dude? <laughs> Whoa, dude, getting late. Dude, that I think good? that was good. No. Like no time's ever passed. <laughs> Good old times, keep rolling. You been eating a Taco Bell lately? Um, you know I still represent Taco Bell, man. <laughs> I'm a lifer.